If you're watching this, you're probably an Australian attending BAM 13. Or you're an international trying to work out what a BAM is. Luckily, I'm here to help. BAM 13, also known as Battle Arena Melbourne, is the 13th edition of Victoria's major fighting game tournament. This includes Smash Bros. This will be the third time Smash Ultimate has been seen there, with prior winners being Mr. L, also known as Ben Gold, and Jay Dizzle. This is essentially Australia's Super Major, with last year having Australia's highest attended Smash Ultimate tournament to date, with 343 entrants. Not a Super Major in the technical sense, but you know, it's big for us. At the time of writing, BAM is 53 days away, so let's not delay and get you ready for it. So, preparing for a Major is daunting. Let me assist with this. I may not be a good player, but I can offer some handy tips that can help you prepare for BAM or even any other big event you have, whether that be a monthly, regional, Arcadian, Major, or Super Major. You are in luck. This is your one-stop shop for how to prepare yourself, your characters, and everything you need. If you saw my latest video on Apollo Kage, you would know how much I value good mentality among competitors. Today is no different. Getting your mind ready for a big event is super important because in a big event, you may never know what's going to be thrown your way. Maybe your pool captain gives you a setup that cramps you for room. Maybe you have to play someone with a loud crowd backing them up. Maybe you're on the stream setup on a big stage with all eyes on you. There's a lot of variability to take in on tournament day. A lot can throw you off your groove. We can't prevent these variables, but we can prepare for them. The simplest goal when preparing your mind is doing what you can to keep calm. Actively practice meditation in the lead up to the event. If anything, it will assist with you being calm before you enter the venue. Meditation routines can be found on YouTube and on a bunch of apps and can be as short as five minutes. It's one of the easiest things you can do if you struggle with pre tawny nerves. One thing to attempt if you find yourself getting mad in brackets is trying to implement the reverse approach of mentality. Try to be more open-minded towards losses to be more efficient with your progress. It's hard to respond positively to a loss, but if you can give yourself some room to breathe and calm down between losses, you can work through it. Get some water and fresh air and just start again. Then you're able to think more clearly and maybe ask for advice from your opponents and get games before you leave an event. This will create avenues to more efficient improvement as the advice players give you will give you specific and targeted things to practice. Overall, what you're wanting to achieve through preparing your mind for a bigger event is not to be some mentality guru, but a sense of control over yourself before you even compete. There's too much that's out of your control at a big event, so why not, at the very least, practice the part you can control your mental fortitude. Next step you have after practicing the mental game is to work on your character's polish. How can you be expected to close sets when you're struggling to close stocks? Time to hit the lab. There are a bunch of aspects of your play you can practice on your own. Too many to list probably, so instead, I'll link to a video by fellow Australian Mast from the lead up to last year's BAM with how you can practice your aspects of play and track it using a spreadsheet. But overall, look at your solo practice as no different to a training session for any sport. How can you be expected to bowl a Yorker if you can't even bowl your stock ball? This is why you need to practice your basics, your movement, your combos, your spacing, your game-to-game -game situations, and your character-specific stuff. Even 20 minutes of solo practice daily will build up your core skills. That's the idea. Consistent practice of your basics so they become second nature when playing. Saving your mental stack. Here's my routine I do for 20 to 40 minutes every day. It fluctuates based on what skills need work at the current point I'm at, but you get the idea. These are your training sessions so when it comes to game day, you're not losing to mistakes which can be practiced on the daily. Solo practice is good, but ultimately you do need practical experience before stepping foot into brackets. Let's talk friendlies. Whether online or offline, you need to find a way to fight real people and work out what is and isn't working from your solo practice. No matter if it's a smash fest or meet up offline, before or after bracket friendlies, or online friendlies in a discord server, or some form of online ladder matchmaking, something needs to be there for you to get that practical experience. It is important to note that your friendlies should be serious. You need to be on your mains and not your saucy week 2 fox. In between matches, be sure to ask questions about what you can do better as well as the matchup in general. Friendlies are one of the best feedback loops you can have access to when you get things to actively work on as you play. One rule with your questions, be specific. Don't be the guy who says, got any advice? Specific questions bring specific answers. It is about targeted advice to target your weak points and work on them. One final thing about friendly sessions, be sure to have a specific goal going in. Look to improve on certain aspects, not just playing for the sake of playing. This is almost as bad as just playing your pocket characters. Even if it's as simple as, I'm playing Roy, 
I want to make sure I'm closing more stocks with Jab Back Air. There, you're actively looking for something you want to get better at during your friendly session. Overall, what you're creating from friendly sessions is targeted practice, a strong feedback loop, and practical experience without the stakes of a tournament. Your tournaments leading up are just as vital to getting ready, if not the most vital aspect. Regardless of whether it's online or offline, you need to ask questions to add to the feedback loop of what your targeted practice is in your other routines. After sets, similar to friendlies, be sure to ask specific questions to get advice on what to work on, and at least if you're offline, see if you can get friendlies with your opponent after they're out of bracket or practice whatever needs to be worked on based on advice you've received. The idea is to practice all your practical aspects here, so when it comes to the bigger stage, you're prepared to not make the simple errors. Your mental is part of this too. If you feel the salt taking over after a set, you've got time. Grab some water, get some fresh air, and just cool off before you go back into play. Keep your anger there, and it'll just fester. You want to practice that good tournament mindset. Overall, tourneys become a great way to efficiently practice your game day procedures without being in a high stakes tourney environment like at these bigger events you're preparing for. Here's some stuff you can do whenever with theory crafting. This is a very broad term, but this can be done without smash in front of you as it's just thinking about aspects of the game and brainstorming ideas for how you tackle states of play, matchups, or general game plans. You can jot down some notes on flowcharts to implement, basic notes of stages to ban and go to in a matchup, or things to avoid. It's really simple. Having them in an accessible format for tournament day is vital. Whether they're compiled in a Discord server, notebook, notes on your phone, a mind map, whatever it is, just needs to be readily available for you to revise as a refresher mid-tournament or even before the tournament kicks off. The main idea of theory crafting is to think creatively about scenarios the game presents you with and seeing if they are actually practical to use, and if they are, have them accessible in a tournament setting. They might save your skin in a set. This is a broad topic, but a very vital one. VOD review is the process of getting a video of a set and analysing it like you're in an English class. Minus the curtain is blue fluff. These VODs can come from anywhere. Whether they're your own to see what you can improve as a visual reference, or a high level player of your character to get ideas to use in bracket yourself. When you're a bit more inexperienced with the game, it's better to VOD review with a player who's higher level and has a greater understanding of the game, as they'll point out situations, improvements, and reasoning in the VOD that you might miss otherwise. There are a variety of things to look for in a VOD, but as a general rule of thumb, you're looking at why commitments in game states do and don't work, and what alternative choices could be used in order to work out what needs to be tweaked in your own gameplay. We're almost through. Let's talk about probably the most stress-inducing part of the preparation. You've been doing all your regular preparations for weeks, and you wake up early on in the week of your event and see the notifications from the TOs. Preliminary seating for the event is out. The questions arise. Who's in my path? What's their character? How good are they? What happens if an upset happens? What do I have to do to make it out of pools? What region are they from? Who can prepare me for the matchup? What if I drown? Let's stop, we need to be calm. It's important to remember, bracket is only a projection of results based on the opinion of tournament organizers. It's not a matter of fact. You can still go beyond what your seed says, unless your first seed, then there's literally nowhere to go. You need to remember, bracket is one of the variables you will be unable to control on tournament day. Upsets, DQs, and the state of the other players are all something beyond you. What you can do in the coming days is tweak your preparation to match the likely opponents you have. Let's say your round one is Diddy. At a solo practice level, begin labbing your regular routine against the Diddy CPU. For friendlies, ask your friends who play Diddy and ask them for some tips on counterplay. If you have a tournament that week, see if you can simulate a set against the Diddy. Theorycraft how you can go about the Diddy Kong matchup and watch VODs featuring your character versus Diddy Kong or even VODs that may feature your opponent. Will this guarantee your victory? Of course not. The player who executes and is calmer in the set will likely be the one winning, but specific preparation can help you with ensuring your execution and mind are calmer for the set. Once you have your bracket, it's about optimizing the little time you have left to prepare in order to reduce the shock factor of what happens in tournament. So when your bracket releases, you calm down and tweak your practice to match what your bracket can bring. And now here it is. Game day. Make sure you do all the normal tournament things. Wake up on time and make sure you have a good breakfast. Make sure you've got all your tournament essentials with enough time to drive or catch public transport there. Get there with time to compose yourself, get some warm up in, and in time to meet your pool captain and get underway. Once you sit down with your opponent and the RPS begins for your first set, be sure to take a deep breath. Remember all your preparation that will matter for the set in front of you. No matter what you've done to lead up to the set, it's all on your execution and bracket mindset now. Whatever happens from here, happens. So whether you go 0-2, barely scrape through pools, or go on a killer run, 
Be sure to enjoy yourself, and hold your head high with the preparations you've made. You may or may not get the result you want, no matter what happens. Have fun with it, and remember, it's no different to any other tourney, it's a learning experience. One tournament will not define you. Be sure when you think back on the event, you reflect on how your bracket went. There's always more to improve on, but also reflect on your preparation and see which aspects can be tweaked for next time. And there we have it. A comprehensive list of the variety of ways you can prepare yourself for a big bracket, whether it be a monthly, regional, major, Arcadian, or super major. Not everything here will work for you, but at the very least, something will stand out for you to implement in your path to preparation. To my Australian friends looking to attend BAM in June, I'll see you there. I'm doing my preparation, and if you were an internet looking for handy advice to prepare, good luck in your preparation for your next event. Never give up, push your limits, and good luck out there. Thanks for watching, I'll see you next time.